So here we are, guys. The list counting down the top 10 best Yu-Gi-Oh cards of 2018. Before we get into said list, I should probably explain some things. First up, to me, this list is neither positive nor negative. I will do a favorite Yu-Gi-Oh cards of 2018 list next, but for the most part, this list to me, this is just what I thought was powerful in 2018 and where it goes compared to some other cards. And this is a hard thing sh to decide. Like, a lot of great cards come out in this game. We may only remember your Firewall Dragons, your Spiral Double Helixes, your Zodiac Tridents, but no, a ton of great cards come out in this game and make it what it is. So there's not always room for everything. So I had to sort of try and figure out a way to separate things and pick things over another. So the sort of system I came up with was if a card came into the game for a tier one deck, but it was not the thing that made that deck tier one, I elected not to necessarily include it. That includes your summon sorceresses, your Link Karibos, basically anything that, as we saw in Europe, a deck could still function without them, as Gokis did, and still be, was a tier one contender, in my opinion, does not deserve a spot compared to other things in this list. Also, I elected to get rid of cards that I feel, though, are powerful and can definitely change the way a game is going that I don't necessarily feel, though, are as meta-defining as some of the other things on this list. These are things like Ghost Bell, Infinite Impertinence, cards of that nature that, again, can be super powerful, but I don't think have the influence many people may want them to or think they should. Uh, and also, again, this list is ultimately opinion, where I think things go and what I think things deserve to be. It's all just sort of where I feel they go. So uh, if you disagree, there's always the comment section below. And without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is Saruja Skulldred, probably one of the more actually liked Link monsters. This thing is fascinating to me. It rewards you for thinking outside of the box, figuring out how to get different monsters on the board in order to get a lot of pluses. And it does it all in a way that kind of feels very fair, but the fact that this thing can be so powerful really changed a lot. Our only two generic Link 4s at the time when this thing came out were Firewall and Borolode, which are very powerful cards, but compared to this thing, which changed the way a lot of decks were played, changed the way a lot of people set up their Link combos, like this is really a powerful card and a really popular card too. The fact that it fixes hands, boost monsters, summon monsters to the field. Skulldred is a great card and a reason Skulldred Turbo has been a thing for almost a year now. Number nine, Boral Sword Dragon. The Link monster that OTKs your opponent. I put it a little bit lower on the list because I don't feel that this thing actually elevated a deck or really changed the direction Yu-Gi-Oh was going. But the fact that we have a Link monster that basically says, game over, is actually really cool. It had been a while since we just got a blowout card of that nature, especially since so many Link monsters have very complicated effects. So having something that, yeah, there's a lot of effects, there's a lot of things you gotta read on this card, but it all leads to a very simple, straightforward strategy and a powerful one. There's a reason at the end of 2018, this is one of the, if not the most expensive card in Yu-Gi-Oh at the moment. Number eight, Heavy Metal Foes Electromite. This thing is a little bit lower on the list than some people may be expecting because in my personal opinion and kind of what the data was showing, Pendulum Magicians were a tier one deck, a bit of a fragile one, but tier one nonetheless. So this thing didn't really change the direction of the meta. What this did change was how you played Pendulum Magician. This card fixed a lot of my personal problems with the deck, that being it's a bit of its glass cannony nature. It added so much search utility, it added draw utility, it added replacement utility. It is an amazingly powerful card and was one of the most defining cards of the first half of 2018. It kept the old mechanic relevant and it still keeps Pendulum Magician relevant. They're still topping. Not in the numbers they were at the beginning of the year, but it's still a thing. Pendulum is one of the most resilient things they've ever added to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And this thing is what keeps that resilience going. Number seven, Thunder Dragon Colossus. The newest card on our list, as the card's only a couple months old at this point. Colossus has allowed Thunder Dragon to be a tier one contender. Simply put, because if you get this thing out on the board, turn one, it can a lot of times lock an opponent out and destroy them. It can shut down Sky Striker, Rongo Bongo. It can even do a lot against Ultra Geist when used correctly. Thunder Dragon Colossus 
is a powerful card. It makes the deck, and it real and there's a very good reason why it closed out and topped so many YCSs. Number six, Danger Nessie. I don't like the dangers. I don't like what these cards do for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't like the fact that they're self-replacing draw engines. I really can't stand them. However, they are super powerful and led to an FTK strategy. Now, though I feel that that FTK was more based around the other things you played in it, such as Firewall, Cannon Soldier, and Graffa, the fact of the matter is the dangers are extremely powerful with their ability to replace themselves and search utility. And in my opinion, the best one is Danger Nessie. Danger Nessie just keeps the plays going and going and going. Fuck, I hate this card. Let's move on. Number five, Altergeist Multifaker. Multifaker took a rogue tier two at best deck and made it tier one. It toolboxes out any Altergeist you need, which can be super powerful with cards like Siliguido and Mel you Seek. It can be chained to any trap card. It's a freaking trap deck. So many combos basically seal the game out with just Multifaker alone and just any random trap. Like, this is a big reason why Infinite Impertinence is so popular. And this card is amazing and fantastic, and God, I just wanted to get limited so badly. Number four, Assault. In my opinion, the, th the defining thing of Goki. Firewall Dragon is out of this game, but Goki and Warrior are still relevant because of this chick. She is awesome. The fact that she can search out any warrior, now though you can't use it with cards like Necrogardena and even Malicious, you can still fit it into your strategy for that turn. It can thin out four equip spells to get to a warrior monster. Like, that's insane. Assault is a super powerful card. It basically helped turn Goki into the monster it was, and it's keeping it relevant to this day. Number three, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. God, I, I don't like Sky Striker. To me, they're not as annoying as Danger or Altergeist, but this card alone is, in my opinion, what makes them so powerful. Now, yes, even with this card hit, they're still relevant in the OCG, but what makes this deck so oppressive is this card searches out the entire archetype, has no once per turn restriction, and oh, after they load up the grave with three spells, which they do like nothing, guess what? Here's a draw. Engage is a powerful, insane card, and in my opinion, kind of makes you wonder when people say that Firewall Dragon getting banned fixed all of Yu-Gi-Oh's problems. Number two, Called by the Grave. Fuck yeah, this card is awesome. Like, the fact that you can deal with hand traps, you can deal with annoying things in the grave, you can stop things in the grave from coming back. Cold by the Grave, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful staples they've created in a long-ass time, maybe since Twin Twister. All the things you can do with this card have made it one of the most played cards of the year, and if it wasn't for number one's notoriety, it would get that number one spot. Speaking of number one, Nightmares. Okay, I know this is a little bit of a cheat because I'm going to put all the Nightmares here, but it's my list. I can do whatever I want. Nightmares changed the way we played Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2018. Now all of a sudden, Link Summoning, which a lot of people were viewing as a bit of a hassle, now all of a sudden you had amazing generic links that had good effects and actually made you benefit from experimenting more with the link mechanic, trying to extra link, trying to come up with good link combos because you'd get that draw and their protection effects. The nightmares really define the way we played Yu-Gi-Oh to the point where people just want them limp banned for existing. <laughs> like how many times does that happen in this game? Okay, maybe too much, but the nightmares are super powerful. Rather, you're popping shit with Phoenix, popping monsters with Cerberus, uh, spinning back with Unicorn, who at this moment is probably the best one. My boy Griffin, who is, okay, he's not great, but he's a lot of fun to use. Mermaid is such an oppressive card, and of course, Nightmare Goblin, the first banned Link monster, only getting banned like, what, four months after he came out? This thing is so powerful, extra normal summons, protecting from targeting, great Link arrows. The Nightmares, in my opinion, defined Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2018, and they are a super powerful set of cards that have left their mark maybe forever on this game. But what did you think? In the comment section below, give me your thoughts on this list. If you agree with my opinions, if you think some of these cards maybe should or should not have been here, and cards you thought should have been here. Tell me about that in the comment section below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and join me for a few more lists.